About a week or two ago, I saw this transition on TikTok and it blew up. And for good reason, it was one of the greatest transitions I've ever seen. And I wanted to take a crack at it, try it for myself, and then show you exactly how I did it. I'll show you my version of the transition in a second here, and then I'll show you how to create exactly the same transition, while at the same time, giving you some basic principles that you can apply to any transition to get maximum results. Okay, so here's my version of the transition. Shit's cut, bitch. I think it turned out pretty well. And the big question that a lot of people ask is, at what point do you switch from shot A to shot B? And the answer is, we don't. It's actually two shots playing at the same time. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a great transition will leave people asking, how did you actually do it? Where exactly was the switch? And seams in a mask or completely covering the frame are a clear giveaway of a swap from shot A to shot B. So part of the magic of this video is that shot A and shot B are both visible at the same time. If I was to show you the entire shot from an omniscient perspective, you'd have something that looks like this. A shot where things are happening in the same space, but a virtual camera per se is leaving one shot and starting to reveal the rest. But there's no real start or end to either of them. Adding to the reason why the transition feels the way it does, it feels like one shot, because it technically is. But despite you knowing now exactly how I did this effect, there's still some questions that you probably have. So I'll be going over a couple of different key principles to keep in mind for making any seamless transition. And the first piece is to hide seams in easy places. And what I mean here by easy is that it's easy for you to do just a little bit of work and to perfectly hide any seams or transition points. If I was to be 100% truthful, this is a mishmash of a bunch of different shots in one combined larger shot. And the process of doing this is called compositing. And it would be really easy to tell where all the seams are if the shot was like this. But there's a reason this transition was done with salt on a black background. It was to hide the seams in the black. So the key was to make sure that while I was filming this on my phone, I locked onto the subject and then reduced the exposure so that the black background was pure black. And it also helped to iron out the creases of the fabric I was filming against so that you didn't have to fight against harsh highlights and shadows. Everything was roughly as dark as everything else. But once that was done, it kind of didn't even matter how the salt actually landed. Because regardless of which take I used, whether it was this one or this one, all of these star arrangements look believable. So what's the trick then? There has to be a trick, there needs to be. Well, there kind of is. Not so much a trick, so much as one thing that needed to be done to make the entire process a whole lot easier. The biggest problem that you have with a transition like this is the motion. How do you perfectly pair the motion between this, the camera moving across the salt from left to right, and this larger scene here, when both scenes are gonna be seen at the same time? The movement doesn't just need to be close, it needs to be perfectly identical. Now, there's two different ways that you could try to go about this. One is that you can try just filming the first and the second shot in exactly the same motion, pixel perfect over the course of an entire 10 second shot. Or the other option is that you can just have both shots locked off and then do all that movement digitally. And this is where the trick comes in because I was actually filming the salt on my phone in real life with real camera motion. But right at this point here, I actually added a freeze frame and this is where all the digital camera motion starts. So basically in After Effects, I just created a composition that was bigger than what I needed and placed the salt shaker footage in the top left corner because the motion that I was going through was to the right and down. And as soon as the salt stopped falling and moving around, I added a freeze frame. Then I just made a simple starry sky collage out of that footage. So this meant duplicating the footage without a freeze frame and going a little further along and getting the next segment of the salt and then freeze frame that and putting it beside the original to get a larger scene and duplicate it and rinse and repeat until you get a unique looking sky. But it was looking empty and boring so I went to motion array and I downloaded this picture of a starry night sky and boom, we had this. And what's nice about this is because it's a perfectly black scene with little white specks, you don't have to match up these shots perfectly as they were in real life. You can actually create something entirely unique and from your imagination. If I was to look at this shot as a whole, if you kind of just put aside for the fact that it's kind of an unrealistically fantasy kind of sky, there's nothing about it that screams that something's wrong. Nobody can say that this star doesn't go here or that, oh, this salt piece wasn't here in the original shot because nobody knows what the original shot was. So at this point, we've created the connection point between the two clips and all that was left is just to put in shot B. And the nice thing is that because this was shot at night with a really dark sky, all I had to do was make a little bit of an adjustment in Lumetri color to make the blacks pure black so that they lined up with the other sky elements. And now in order to blend these together, all I did was put the star layers on top and then make sure that they were all set to screen, which basically just makes the black transparent and the white elements visible. There was some white speckling over top of the building here, but all I had to do was make a rough mask around that because even if I left one or two by accident, there's really nothing saying that that couldn't be a window glare or a 
reflection or something. And with that, we finally have this scene all combined together. Now all I had to do was highlight everything, right click and select pre-compose and reduce this top layer down to the size that we want, which in my case is a vertical nine by 16 or 1080 by 1920. Move it all the way to the top left. And then as soon as the freeze frame happens, we want to keyframe motion to go from left to right and a little bit down and then finish with a keyframe with me in the center down here. And to do this, all I had to do was keyframe the position of the top composition. Throw in a couple of ease ins and ease outs and we've got a scene that looks almost completely real. But there was a little bit of a stutter here when I go from the real footage to the freeze frame version of the larger composition. No matter how much I tried, I couldn't quite get the motion perfect to where it looked flawless. So what's the solution? Well, I downloaded some camera shake presets for motion array, slapped those on, and this gives just a hint of a real person holding the camera to help blend the first and second scene together flawlessly. If you wanted to check out those camera shake presets, I've left a link in the description down below. And if you wanted to check out another cool effect you can create inside of After Effects, check out this tutorial right here. I'll see you over there.